Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for your patience. Um, as promised, we're back with spotlights on conference takeaways, um, and I would like to welcome um, some of our experts and partners who have agreed to share their personal um, takeaways from, from this conference. I would like to welcome Juru Blanusha, who is Secretary General of the Regional Youth Cooperation Office, uh, Nora Hassani, the Managing Director of German Kosovo Business Association, um, Dafina Pezzi, Ge Secretary General of the National Youth Congress uh, and Cross-Border Factory Tirana Office. Um, Frank Moraviec, who is the Managing Director of Cross-Border Factory and Special Envoy for Southeast Europe of the Franco-German Youth Office. And last but not least, Tim Judah, Balkan Correspondent of The Economist London. I look forward to your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Valeska. Um, hello from my side. Hello from Belgrade. Uh, as we have quite limited time for our uh, takeaways uh, intervention, so I still feel the need to really thank to the German government, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, for putting this topic high on agenda within the German presidency of the EU. But I also need to thank to Aspen Institute and the Southeast Europe Association for all their support and good coordination in the preparatory phase. Of course, to thank Frank and to thank the cross-border factory and especially to the 12 young people uh, that we have identified and that we have supported in the last couple of months to work together, to think and discuss together and then to produce one of the most, I would say, comprehensive paper about the uh, young people's, uh, let's say, perspectives and view on, on this topic. And, um, I, as, as a Secretary General of RICO, an organization that is actually promoting mobility, an organization uh, that was established really to, to, to promote cooperation in the Western Balkans and EU integrations, I really feel proud uh, to say that uh, this kind of approach of, of RICO, together with our credible partners, to actually give the floor an opportunity to young people to discuss, to design, and then to uh, 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 propose the policies that are of the concern of young people is the approach that really works well. I feel the need also to a little bit uh, reflect on the conference itself and also to maybe again demystify the topic itself. Uh, uh, RICO is the organization that is in first place uh, enhancing and promoting intra-Balkan intra uh, youth mobility schemes and um, intra-Balkan opportunities for young people to meet together, to overcome prejudice and to cooperate better. Uh, but I think that as organization, we are one of uh, very rare, uh, uh, maybe stakeholders that are really promoting mobility. And uh, of course that we are not promoting the brain drain as such, but um, in order somehow really to, to sound more optimistic and positive in a view of this topic, I want to say that uh, there is a really great, beautiful, and positive side of the uh, uh, fact that um, uh, uh, young people in nowadays world are really able to travel around to, to be educated and also to look for their maybe better perspective elsewhere. So this is a kind of the achievement of the nowadays world that we should all together praise. And as a father of two young boys, I think that one of the things that I'm going to advise them to do once they are able enough to travel or to be educated by themselves is going to be actually to use this opportunity and to have opportunity to study or work abroad. I think this is one of the most beautiful experience that any of us could go through. Uh, but there is another side flip of the coin. And, uh, and I would like to refer to the actually article in the Balkan Insights that uh, uh, Mr. Judah presented last year, uh, very clearly explaining that uh, these um, depopulation trends are really affecting a lot uh, our societies in the Western Balkans. It has implication on the economical, uh, uh, political sphere, cultural sphere. Uh, the, the rates are high and you already went through all these numbers and I'm sure that um, this is not something new that I'm going to introduce now. But uh, these trends were there uh, and not only in the last couple of decades, these trends are uh, there for last couple of centuries people were leaving this region, mainly to, uh, due to the political and economical reasons. Uh, however, the, the higher fertility rates were there to compensate that loss. Uh, 
Uh, nowadays, unfortunately, these fertility rates are way below too. And it is reflecting really clearly on the fact uh, that the number of uh, population and the number of people in the Western Balkans is really declining in an alarming way. So this is something that needs to be uh, recognized by the government and needs to be tackled with a very strong, coherent and uh, holistic policies uh, that need to really tackle different, different areas. Um, I really cannot add much and more uh, uh, to, to the proposals, recommendations, concrete proposals uh, coming from these 12 young people that we're working on the also paper called uh, One Way Ticket. Indeed, uh, the investment in the proper reforms of the educational system with a special focus on the civic education uh, is something that needs to be there as a top priority activity. Uh, to make our region more greener, as this group of 12 people said, is also something that would be really, really important for our region. To further enhance and support uh, different uh, 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 let's say, uh, 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 ways of the uh, intra-Balkan youth mobility, but also mobility in general is also super important. I think that the idea of having uh, better, let's say, cooperation between universities in the Western Balkans and also between universities in the Western Balkans and the rest of the Europe is something can also be uh, the good and the very concrete measure digital age and potential and to recognize the potential of the digital age is of course um, an absolutely relevant approach and absolutely something that should also be connected with um, uh, our joint efforts in the western balkans to change the perception or the image of the region itself it is often taken uh, by so-called foreign investors as a place where they can find the cheap labor force and just the manpower. However, I think that we are all aware that landscape, landscape is still different, that we really uh, do have uh, the huge potential in, let's say, these innovative IT technologies and then as a digi digi digital uh, area as such. And I believe that this is the place where the, any kind of investment is going to pay off. Just to conclude, uh, and I had a lot of talks with um, my colleagues, but also uh, with Frank, who is going to, I guess, uh, also take the floor a bit later. Uh, I really think that there is one more approach and one change of the paradigm that needs to happen in order to really send a clear, positive message and to, let's say, tackle this issue. Uh, I mean, why young people are really going to the, the EU state? Why young people are, are going over there? Uh, one of the answers that I'm using um, lately is because they feel like at home. I think that young people from the Western Balkans do feel as the Europeans and they do feel, feel EU member states or Europe as such as their home. So this is important also for our partners in the West to understand, but it's also important for us here in the region to understand that we need to bring these kind of provisions here as soon as possible. And not only that, I think that we should think even more uh, bigger or to be even more ambitious, actually to create an environment in the Western Balkans that is going to actually attract the citizens and young people of the European Union to actually come and join us in the region. I'm already warned that I need to, to, to speed up and to, to, to close my uh, introduction remarks. So thank you very much. And I'm now handing this over, I think, to Nora. Thank you. Greetings to Berlin. Guten Tag, Mirita i Dobrdan, to all of you who are here with us today. I will share with you my takeaways from this conference. Youth in the Western Balkans has been really underappreciated for so long. And here, during these past three days, youth was in the center of every discussion. So the conference one of, uh, was one of the rarest platforms where business representatives, experts, and politicians of the Western Balkan countries could not only hear what the youth had to say, but also really and truly listen and understand their motives and reasons for leaving or staying in their countries of origin. It was emphasized so many times during the conference that it should be a top priority and in the interest of the region, but also of the European Union to work in creating better opportunities for young people to work and live in their countries of origin. It was also said that investing in our youth would be a strategic win, and I couldn't agree more with that. 
uh, by pushing reforms in education, healthcare, and the fight against corruption, we could uh, close the economic gap, we could improve the skill sets, which are very much needed. And through this, we could give young people better chances for jobs and a better life in their home countries. And what we need in the Balkans, and this is my conclusion to this conference, is we need governments with a vivid vision for the future. We need politicians who are not afraid to walk the talk and act. We need more action and less small talk. And we've seen that creating a better future in our home countries should be a joint effort. What I have confirmed for myself as Nora throughout this whole conference is that we, the daughters and sons of Balkans are so much more alike than we think we are. There are more values that are connecting us than dividing us. And this uh, applies to the problems apparently as well. So only through a regional approach um, to our joint problems, we could be able to find joint solutions. I want to thank the Southeast European Association so much um, and the Aspen Institute and also the German Federal Foreign Office for bringing all of us together here so we could share experiences, opinions and ideas. And of course, thank you so much for giving us the chance to meet and have new connections to uh, like-minded people. Thank you so much for this brilliant event. Um, and now I will give the floor to Daphina Pezzi from Tirana. She is the Secretary General of the National Youth Congress. Daphina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and hello from Tirana. I don't want to repeat any of what was said from the colleagues, which I fully agree. So I'm going to wrap up my conclusions and my takeaways from, from this conference. Firstly, despite good economic recovery in the region, the labor market situation still remains challenging with a slow pace of job creation and joblessness remaining high, in particular among young people, women and marginalized groups. Secondly, the youth of the region needs to be better equipped with a wide range of skills, from basic skills to entrepreneurship and soft skills as well. Future skills need to have anticipated in order to train youth of today according to the requirements of the labor market of tomorrow, including here the aspect of digitalization and thinking and working in an avant-garde way, which was previously mentioned from the colleague Juro from RICO. I just want to add as well the willingness and um, the motivation of young people of the Western Balkans to get better equipped with knowledge, information, and their willingness to participate meaningfully in decision-making processes and in policy-making. And this needs to be supported, to be facilitated, and to be foreseen in different agendas in order to share, let's say, the responsibility as institutions and stakeholders and be there for young people in a meaningful way. To conclude, youth must stay high in the agenda. And this is the moment when I want to thank very much Aspen Institute, Zudost um, Europa Gesellschaft, the German um, government, RICO and Cross Border Factory for contributing not only through these three days, but contributing in the field, working every day with young people, caring about their issues and lobbying and advocating in order to make the youth sector more vivid um, and to contribute in, a, in, let's say, in a systematic way. Um, I think that it's very important to have a calculation of costs of migration of youth in the development and reforming process of Western Balkan countries. This is why we treat the issue as an alarming thing. We should recognize the role of youth in democratization reforms and, and the reforms um, towards European integration because this generation is going to play a huge role, not only in the installation of the standards, but as well to go forward uh, in the European family as we never were before. Regional agendas and cooperation is a key element which needs to be, let's say, uh, better invested there and seriously uh, taken into consideration the fact that we still lack the competences and the capacities and we need a lot of support in this, in this path that we are working and walking. The government should move to stance from dialogue to partnership in all stages of policy cycle and we should exercise this in every field of our life. And my last message for this conference is people, let's go out of capitals, 
out of bureaucracies, we should have open talks, open communication, open collaboration with the citizens, and especially with young people coming from different areas and backgrounds. Thank you very much. And it was my honor and my pleasure to be part of this conference. I'm looking forward for the follow-ups. Good afternoon from my side. Thank you for the invitation to contribute to the Spotlight and Conference Takeaways. Uh, I have five minutes to share with you four takeaways from my side. My first one, I congratulate the Federal Foreign Office, Aspen Institute and Südost Europa Gesellschaft for the clear decision to invite young citizens of the Western Balkans to such a high level conference in the framework of the German EU presidency and to give them such a large space to make their voice, their views, their expertise, their feelings and their concrete ideas on migration audible. That is really encouraging. As part of the preparations for this conference, Cross Border Factory had the opportunity to, together with my colleagues Adi Cheri Magic, Snezhana Bokavac and Karina Gashi and some of the experts present here and I would like to take the opportunity to thank them most sincerely, to think and work with 11 such talented, committed and competent young citizens who were all represented on the panels here to have a voice in this conference. We met regularly for some weeks and I can really not emphasize enough what a pleasure and a privilege it was to work with this group to discuss migration in individual, local, national, regional and European context and to hear their personal views and to discuss about experiences, data, facts, and backgrounds. The work of this group was a really good practice example of a strong regional cooperation. And I would like to thank also uh, my colleagues of RICO explicitly for this, for this cooperation and to thank the group. The, group. Um, the good news is that this group plans to continue working together on specific topics of this conference. My second takeaway, listening to young citizens from the Western Balkans is not enough. Their arguments and concrete proposals should together with them be further discussed and politically developed to improve solutions, develop new ideas, make existing resources more visible and to use these resources. I believe it's an important takeaway from this conference that young citizens are able to make, uh, to make important, to make, to, <clears throat> sorry, uh, to make um, important proposals and uh, to contribute in these discussions and to also to contribute with feasible contributions to, the import, to these important European debates. I refer you once again to the paper one way ticket no more, seven ideas for prosperous Western Balkans, which you can find here in the library on the website. I quote from this paper, this conference organized by the German EU presidency should not be a one-time event, but turn into a regular event to discuss migration and other issues as a part of the future EU presidencies and Berlin process. My third takeaway, this conference has also shown that there is a deep, deep gap in the dialogue between young citizens and the political elites of the Western Balkans. And I link to the first panel of this conference. There is a significant lack of dialogue between political elites on the one hand and young people on the other side. We would like to refer here once again to the proposal in the paper I have just mentioned which also proposes the establishment of, for example, civic education centers. In these places, young citizens could also be better involved in the political decision-making process in the Western Balkans and with the European Union and other issues of the future of Europe, including through dialogue with the political elites. My fourth and last takeaway, the young generation of the Western Balkans must be involved now and from the very beginning on in the dialogue of the future of Europe. This is also in the interest of the European Union and its citizens. And then the subject of migration will also be seen in a different light. 
And this problematic term of brain drain will become a normal and desirable mobility in the common Europe. Thank you. And now I give the floor to Tim. Uh, well, thank you very much. Can you all hear me? Great, okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for um, organizing this. Um, as a leader of Ratchage said um, this morning, only a few years ago, such a major conference was uh, unimaginable. People were really not interested in this uh, subject. So the fact that none other than the, the German Federal Foreign Ministry takes upon itself with, its con with partners, of course, to organize this shows that thankfully, and not too soon, uh, thinking has begun to change. Uh, what we've seen also is the conference has shown, you know, how many good people there are out there and across the region thinking about it and whose ideas and work uh, needs to be harnessed more than ever. Um, my first major takeaway from this was that, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm I'm going to start that again. My first major takeaway was that, well, this was a big step. It immediately becomes clear that actually this topic of migration and especially youth migration actually leads to more questions than answers. Um, and each of these really can be the subject of a, a, a new conference or debate in itself. I'm talking about circular migration, commuter type migration, education reform, and the question of whether even with European integration and good governance and higher standards of living, much would change. I'm actually thinking of the Eastern German example here, where all of these things uh, happened and until very recently, population still plummeted. Things might have begun to, to change in Eastern Germany in the last couple of years, but it's taken almost 30 years to uh, get there. Then I think it's a pity that we haven't talked very much about um, fertility, really, because emigration is only uh, one third of the problem. Low fertility and the lack of immigration are the rest of it. Even if there was no migration from the Western Balkans at all, in the coming decades, their populations would continue to fall and to age because of low birth rate. And that leads me to my final points. That is that um, what we talked about um, uh, what that means, sorry, that is that uh, what we talked about with relation to the Balkans and especially the bulk, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not making myself clear here. We, we talked about the Balkans and especially the Western Balkans, but we've done it in um, isolation as though something special is happening in the, in the Western Balkans, the Balkans in general. And actually it's not, I mean, it may be particularly dramatic, but we really have to put the Balkans in uh, uh, context. And that context is that what's happening in the Balkans and what's happening, what's happening in the region is really happening in different, different levels across almost all of Central and Eastern Europe and also much of the former Soviet Union too. I mean, it used to be that demographers were worried about um, the earth becoming overpopulated, um, even you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And now they're worried about populations shrinking from Lisbon all the way to Tokyo and soon start shrinking in China too. So in this context, following on from that, we have an, another problem which we can't shy away from. It cannot be healthy, I think, politically, socially, economically, and so on, that people from one half of Europe, including the Balkans, are leaving to go and live in the other half. Freedom of movement, yes, of course, but let's talk about the problems that result from this and not ignore them because they are perhaps inconvenient. Um, in the first six months of this year, uh, Germany lost 40,000 people. Okay, well, Germany's got 82 million people, 83 million people, so it's, 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 not, it's not so, so uh, significant. Um, but in fact, Germans don't really need to worry because the only reason that Germany lost 40,000 people in the first six months of this year is because of the pandemic, which made it very hard to import uh, 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 young and skilled people from elsewhere, obviously, especially uh, the Balkans. But once the pandemic is over, normal service can be res resumed and Germany and other Western European countries can continue to make up for their own demographic shortfalls by importing people from elsewhere. 
Um, it's great and a revelation from a part of the commission that it's extremely hard to find out any information from about what they're doing, that um, Dubravka Schuetzer, commissioner in charge of demo demography, who was um, part of the introduction, said that Western Balkan countries will be involved in the conference on the future of Europe. But I hope that some of these difficult and inconvenient truths maybe will not be ignored and uh, covered up with low hanging fruits, such as by arguing that kind of like obvious stuff that um, more older people and uh, women can be incorporated into the labor force, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the population of the whole of the EU and so the whole of Europe is set to shrink. Um, Europeans are getting older and in 50 years time, there'll be 18% less people of working age in the EU 27. You know, put this in context and remember what um, Edo Omic said yesterday, which was really shocking, that 60% of firms in the Western Balkans are vulnerable to automation and hence their workers are going, probably going to find themselves replaced by robots. And you can see why this topic is of such urgency for the Balkans, yes, for Central and Eastern Europe, yes, but for Europe uh, as a whole. So thank you very much. Thanks for organizing it. And I hope, I sincerely hope this is just the first step in you know, looking at a, a, a much bigger problem. It's not the Balkans in isolation. You know, it's like saying, I've got a problem with my hand. How am I going to deal with my hand? It affects my whole body. Thank you very much. And um, back to uh, Valeshka. Thank you very much. And thank you for sharing your very diverse um, impressions of the conference um, over the past two days. Um, I believe there's not much more left for me to do um, than on behalf of Southeast Europe Association and uh, Aspen Germany, um, thank all the ministers and the great experts for all of your contributions to the conference. I would like to specifically thank all the young people who were involved for sharing your views and your very personal stories. Thank you so much. Uh, you have really made this, this conference unique. And I would like to also thank all participants for the great interest um, over the past two days. We have all been spending a lot of time on Zoom or other platforms uh, lately, and still we've had an average of over 120 participants throughout this conference. So thank you very much for that. It goes without saying, as I said earlier, that we would have really loved to have you all here in Berlin. And we do hope that in the future we will be able to do so again. But we would also be very much interested in your feedback when it comes to this conference. So we will send you a short survey and we'd really appreciate if you could fill that out. And just in case you have missed a panel or two, all of the discussions will be available on our YouTube channel soon. And if you would like to watch, watch the videos that were contributed um, or have a look at the papers that were contributed to this conference, um, the conference platform will remain open for a few more days. And there will also be a publication with all papers and results very soon. And finally, I would like to thank the Foreign Office and Southeast Europe Association for the great cooperation. And I would like to welcome Ambassador Susanne Schütz, um, who joined us here live again to share also her views on the past two days and the key takeaways of the Foreign Office. Thank you, Ambassador Schütz, um, to you and the Foreign Office for making this topic part of the German presidency and for giving us the opportunity to be part of it. I wish all of you a Zoom-free weekend and um, Ambassador Schütz, I would like to hand over to you to close this conference. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Valeska and dear participants, dear friends.